Good day guys, welcome to RTRC. So, what have I got for you today? Well, it's something called rotor flight. Now, I'm very, very passionate about rotor flight. Um, and I guess for a lot of you coming from quad markets and all this, you're gonna go, oh, rotor flight, what on earth is that? Well, rotor flight is to all intents beta flight for helicopters. And you know what? This is a very, very big deal. Um, you might not think so straight off, but actually it's a big deal. Because, you, you know what? Traditionally, the um, heli market, you know, there's V-bar and there's V-bar and there's V-bar. Oh, and did we mention V-bar? Um, and I know there are some other fly barless units out there, but actually everybody just uses V-bar. And that's fine, that's great. But in the end, it's a commercial product, it's not open source, and you're very, very tied to an end manufacturer. Um, and the end result is it's great, the heli guys all use it, but you kind of, you're still completely at the whim of a commercial entity out there, and, and that's kind of not so good. So um, the long and short of it is um, a chap called Dr. Rudd, I'll use his alias he has, he released Rotor Flight version 1 a year or so back, and essentially he kind of, from his side, he's incredible with his maths and everything else, and he wanted to find out a little bit about how the physics and everything worked, so he took Beta Flight, and he made version one of Rotor Flight. And, you know, all, all up, it's been quite a successful project. But um, in the meantime, because things move on, um, essentially what has happened is Rotor Flight 2 has been under development and it's taking time. It's taking time to get it out, but it is fantastic. It really is fantastic. Now, I, I think it's fair to say at, at the outset of this, if you're into helis and if you are not a technical person, you might find Rotor Flight a little bit of a like, oh my god, what's going on? It's all broken, it's bad, I don't know what I'm doing. And I think it's also fair to say that if you are that type of person, you probably would have also had a problem even trying to get a quadcopter built. So in that scenario, maybe Rotor Flight isn't for you. But for those of you who are a little bit more, you know, into your geeky, techy stuff, it's really something quite interesting. Now, to give you a little bit of an idea about the momentum, so first off, all of these helis you see here, they are all running rotor flight, every single one of them. And, you know, I fly from basically your tiny S1 size all the way up to 500 size. I've got a 500, that's oh, behind me, there it is, there's a 500 size. All of them work absolutely fine with rotor flight. But it goes one step beyond because let, let's consider that rotor flight is also working with this sort of thing. It's a brushed tail on the back. Likewise for the um, FW450 up there, that's got a brushed tail or brushless tail, should I say. So um, we kind of have a little bit of option now. I, I would say, well, in fact, I can't actually tell you for sure under V-Bar because I don't use V-Bar, but I'm not convinced V-Bar would support a motor on the tail. Um, it's just not really within their remit. But um, yeah, so um, I, I guess the point I'm getting at is Rotor Flight 2 is actually very stable and very ready at this point in time. However, Another caveat, I keep putting in caveats here. Rotor Flight 2 has not yet officially been released. You can use it, you can download it, you can flash it, you'll get support, you'll get all of that from the guys in the Discord channel. But at the end of the day, right now today, and we're sitting in the end of November 2023, it's still in beta. However, it's due for final release. We're talking sort of March area next year, so maybe March 2024, we will have an official end user version of the system. And, and that's kind of a big deal because version two finally says this is stable and it means that the dev guys can basically sit back and say, okay, we've now got a stable version. Everyone moved to that because it flies 100% better than Rotor Flight 1. And then they can get on and do the dev for the kind of ad hoc features. And it's a long list but they're not things that you as an end user would ever really want. ProPilot might want it, 
but for the average guy he's gonna go well it does everything I want um, what else can I tell you about Broda Flight so hardware manufacturers things have upped the game slightly so here's here's a classic example this is oh can I get it into focus there this is a flywing fly ballless unit designed specifically for rotor flight so this is the um ooh, i think it's the f405 board or something like that fantastic very very capable board does everything you want now that's not the only one because for example in this one i've got a fly dragon and that's another one that's running an f7 processor and it's also very good but it doesn't stop there and this is this is where things get really interesting so Maytek, Maytek, our good old Maytek, who we always have releasing um, quad-copped boards, they have now released a board, and it is specifically designed for rotor flight. But then, and I'm pulling up this little heli, and I'll give you an idea, just so you can see. This is an OMP M2, which I ripped off the original flight controller. And sitting on top of here is a 20x20 20 20 flight controller plus ESC which um, came, was originally designed for um, a um, quadcopter. But I've popped it on there, and now I've got my OMP M2 powered by Rotorflight. But uh, why would I do this? Well, <laughs> there are some very, very tempting reasons. So, first off, on a little heli like the OMP M2, there's, um, the speed controllers on these things can all be supporting something called a BL heli which for you heli guys you probably have never even heard of it but for the quad guys you'll all know about BL heli it's bi-directional d shot is the outcome of this and what it means is from a rotor flight perspective you can know the speed the motor is going using the protocol and that's very very useful because that means that rotor flight can use that information to filter out noise within the airframe because it knows how fast everything's going and where the vibrations are coming in and that makes things fly really, really well. Um, why else would I have it? Well, it's great, you know, the, well, I think the um, M2s, the newer versions have a Bluetooth app. Well, I've got Lua scripts, and that's also a big deal because um, just like with Betaflight and Dynav and all that, Rotoflight has a Lua script system, which works, there's a basically a whole stack of software, and it will work under two very key systems. So all of your Edge TX, OpenTX systems, you can configure and tweak everything on that heli using your transmitter. Fantastic. But um, they've also released, and it's thanks to Egon who's done all this work, is um, the same software also runs under Ethos Radio. So if you're someone running a FreeSky system, one of the um, Ethos X18s, X20s, whichever one, you've also got a rotor flight Lua script that works perfectly on that. And in the end, you can go to the field, you can fly, and you can tune and configure your heli to fly just like you want it. And that comes down to editing the pins, it comes down to, you know, tail torque attenuation, you know, you name it, you can do it. There's there's a lot of stuff you can do, and it, it really helps you as an end user who's using Rotoflight configure things to work. Now, again, and this is, this is uh, I, I could go about this for ages, I get really excited about it, but I'm... Um, because we have an open source foundation for Rotoflight, a lot of other interesting things come in. So if we took your typical VBAR system, um, and I'm using VBAR because everyone else uses it, so VBAR receives a lovely S bus signal from your receiver. Great, but actually I might want to know the head speed. I want to know the RPM. Maybe I want to know the current that I'm drawing. Maybe. You know, this telemetry values is what I'm getting to. Maybe I want that information and it might be useful to me somehow. Well, when you sit down with Rotoflight, yes, you can use SBUS, but do you know what? It supports ELRS, it supports Crossfire, it supports FreeSky F port. So all of these bi directional protocols suddenly are just sitting waiting to be used. And that means, you know, for example, on all of my helis behind me here, I have the ability to see what my actual head speed is. You know, so I, I can trigger alerts and announcements on my radio. I can just basically, it just gives me a toolkit of just wonderful, wonderful stuff. And it really is good. Um, so this is all food for thought. It's a game changer. Um, and then where else are we? Well, I guess the other interesting thing about Rotoflight, it's beginning to get some real traction. 
So as I said, is there's now commercial companies out there who are releasing boards that work with it. There is a very big brand on the way who's going to be releasing one. You know, I'll leave you guys guessing on that, but it's very interesting and I can't wait to see what is produced. And I think in the end, you know, it's kind of telling when, I guess, you know, if you go onto the Rotoflight Discord channels, um, which you can find these all on rotoflight.org, you know, it's interesting when you see that you're starting to get some really top level pilots actually using Rotoflight. That's a big thing. You've got, you know, hell, you've got Jono, or is it Johnny or Jono from OMP? And he's very active in the community. And I, I just feel it's quite telling when you've got guys who are some of the, the top end of the game beginning to actually go, ooh, what's this? This is good. Well, that's good. It's, it's a really good thing. And I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that what we actually see is kind of a cultural shift within the heli market. You know, helis traditionally, it, it's almost... In some ways, it can be a little bit elitist. Um, and I guess that's probably driven by the financials of it because helis are not cheap to build. You're going to have to have a little bit of cash in your back pocket. You know, I, I'm not so well off. And whilst I've got a lot of helis, you know what? These are all clones. I've gone for the cheaper end because I can't afford the expensive end. But I've still got a lot of helis. But bringing something like Rotoflight to the table has just opened up a little bit more and made it more accessible. It's the fact that as an end user, you can get the full feature set of an advanced system, basically, on a cheap flight control. And to give you an idea, that sort of thing is going to set you back about eighty odd dollars. It's not a lot, you know. The um, the Matic one's closer to the, I think, around the forty five to fifty dollar mark off the cuff. I think it's around there. So um, that's kind of kind of cool. You know, you, you really do open up a whole world of possibilities because you bring the cost down. It's all open source. And, well, we know what happens with open source. Everybody uses it. So, um, yeah, interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. But, um, yeah, so what else? So, basically, I'm passionate about Rotoflight. Um, I've gotten relatively involved in the community. Um, I'm going to be starting to look at um, helping the guys with doing some development changes and things on the configurator. So maybe maybe you'll get Rob Thompson on the list of credits. Who knows? I don't know. But um, I'll have to see if I can do it because my dev is kind of a bit mediocre. But um, yeah, it's exciting stuff. And I'm utterly, utterly thrilled about it. Um, I love how it flies. Everybody who flies it, you know, tends to be, wow, this is good. Um, so um, yeah, it's very, very positive. There you go, check it out. It's rotoflight.org. I'm going to give you a link to the Discord channel and everything in the description. But um, I do encourage you, have a look. If you're into helis, you will love it. Anyway, guys, enjoy. Cheers.